y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The year 2019 is going to be an exciting time in the city of New Orleans, and we want you to be a part of it. If you have a book, an event, or a business that you would like to promote right here on Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions, contact us at www.mtwimagesolutions.com or info at mtwimagesolutions.com. See you there. Image Solutions, and I am so excited because we are, what, like six days out from the Black History Month Literary Weekend, and I have the last two authors who we're going to be highlighting right here in the studio with me, and I also have one of our designers right here in the studio, so we're going to have some fun, and we're going to get it popping, and I better see you guys on Saturday when we're going to be talking about Black History Month Literary Weekend. We're going to be celebrating our literacy as well as our history. But first, we're going to get started with um, a young lady who's coming with us all the way from Florida. So I told you, we're not just local anymore. We're, we're getting national, and pretty soon we're going to be international. We'll probably have some people flying in from out the country next year. You just watch. But right now, we're going to just tune right into Clearwater, Florida, and talk with Dr. Deloise Jackson. Hi, Dr. Deloise. How are you? Uh-oh, I can't hear you. Okay, well, we're having a, a small technical difficulty with the sound, but I think we're getting that resolved. Okay, because I can hear you well. Wonderful, I can hear you too. How you doing, Dr. Deloitte? I'm doing well, Dr. Lawson. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Thank you so much for being a part of the Black History Month Literary Weekend. Thank you. Glad uh, that you were able to accept me in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, look I was looking forward to it, especially when I saw your book. Um, the name of the book is Faith, My Walking Came to Glory. I love the name. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I think you may have to turn your um, computer down because we're getting some feedback from you. You're getting feedback from yeah, me? I you think, need me to yeah, just turn your, it down? Turn your computer down. Turn the volume down. Yes. A little bit. Okay, we can do that. Is that better? Much better. Okay. Almost. That's okay. We're going to work with it. We're going to work with it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, um, your book, what is, what is your book about? My book is about faith. Faith, my walking came to glory. It's all about uh, how we go through trials and tribulations and how we can come through victoriously, just having faith in you and faith in God and allowing God's master plan to work and apply in your life because he has, he created you. He know all about how, you know, what you're going to need to do to get through those trials and tribulations. But it was the Holy Spirit that spoke into my spirit for me to write the book on faith. I was so actually just about to ask you that. About I'm sorry. So I was actually just about to ask you that. What what um, drove you to write this book? Well, it's not the what; it's the who. 
Okay. I was sitting at home. <laughs> I was sitting at home one night in my den. I, I guess I was in Montgomery at the time. And um, the Holy Spirit wrote, uh, spoke and said, write a book. And I said, me, Lord, write a book? Write a book on what? And the Holy Spirit said, write a book on faith. And here I am. I don't have 700 words in my vocabulary. So I'm like, I can't write a book on faith. I mean, surely, God, you can find somebody else that can write a book on faith because they've gone through a lot. They can write a book on faith. And so I accept the challenge to write the book on faith. And I gave it the subtitle, My Walking Came to Glory, because I knew that I was going to need that cane, that rod, for my power and for my strength. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's it's funny that you know you said the spirit the spirit came to you and told you to write this book. Many times when we're called, we may not think that we have the tools, but God gives us the tools. He absolutely did, and He will do it. You know, you just have to be a willing vessel to accept that challenge because if He tells you to do it, it's going to be prosperous. It's going to do exactly what He wants it to do. Because, absolutely. like I said, I didn't even have a process. I didn't even have a clue as to how to even get started right in the book. But when the Holy Spirit gives it to you and you move expediently on what he wants you to do, it's going to happen. Absolutely. I didn't get the first rejection letter or anything when I was able, ready to get the book published, so I knew it was the Holy Spirit uh, inspired. See, I think you predicted my questions because, see, that was about to be my next question. <laughs> what was your process to getting the book published? <laughs> Well, the, the getting the book published, well, once it was written, well, I can just back up and let's just start from the beginning. Uh, the, like I said, the Holy Spirit inspired me uh, to write a book. And uh, I set goals and schedules. You know, I decided on how many hours I was going to work on it a day or a week, how many pages. Yes. You know, like this is like a job. You work from seven to four. You got to set aside some time mm -hmm. uh, to write the book you know, five to seven at night. Okay, you want to write five pages, five paragraphs. You are determined to do exactly what that goal is set for you to do in order to keep the book moving. That's so, one, That's a piece of advice I like to give new writers because writing a book can often, often be intimidating for writers. And they absolutely. think that they have to write this entire two to 300 page book and how am I going to get through it? But just like you said, setting many goals for yourself. Um, absolutely. Great, Maybe I used to like to set a goal of writing 10 pages a day. Even if I didn't reach 10 pages, the fact that I set that goal and worked toward it, I was able to get something down. And working at it each day helped me to get my book together. Very good, very good. And too, like I said, you know, most people would have to decide on what topic or what genre. The Holy Spirit gave me the book, the, the title of Faith, so I knew it was gonna be an inspirational book. However, I did not know exactly what was gonna, you know, be in the book until you know, much prayer. And then at the end of the day, I went back and I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? God gave me, it was 13 chapters and what to uh, put in that book. Yes. And so uh, we went through, we, we wrote the book. We, uh, I, like I said, I created the environment. I didn't want any uh, distra uh, distractions. I didn't want any, any hindrance. You know, I would put away the email, the phone calls, everything that would be a distraction for me to, to write because I set aside, you know, probably two hours every night to write or every, you know, whenever I set the time to do it, yes. I sat there the entire time. And sometimes I went over the time because once I started writing, God was just giving me words to say. And I'm like, oh my God, I wrote a whole chapter on a night. Absolutely. And it was so exciting. It was actually, it was exhilarating because I'm thinking, oh my God, I didn't have 700 words in my vocabulary and I just finished a whole chapter. How are I'm you like, God, I know this is ordained by you. How are you sitting here saying you don't have 700 words in your vocabulary and you are not... Delois Jackson, you are Dr. Delois Jackson. But I was just Delois when I wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, you. I got so you. It was all good because all of that led up to where I am, you know, right now. Because I'm like, I'm here today because of the grace of God. You know, he purposed for me to be where I am today. Absolutely. Because this is the message inside of me that he wants people to know. So I got to be that vessel to get that word out there. So, you know, after creating that environment, getting that book done, uh, getting it written, I did edit the book until I was done with it. I started editing and it was uh, too time consuming. Mm. So I'm like, okay, God, I mean, I'm editing every time I write something. So I'm like, let's stop the editing. Let's finish the book. So I did my own editing. Then I had to get a professional editor to edit the book before I submitted it to the publishing company because most publishing mm. companies want someone to have looked at it professionally, to have yes. looked at the book before they get it. So the person that actually 
edit my book, she had published like three books, but she did not give me her publisher. I sort of had to find all this on my own because she had told me that, you know, you're probably going to get 200 rejection letters before your book is published. And it, so it don't does feel happen. bad because it's going to happen. You're going to get have about 200. You've got to have thick skin to even go with the publisher. But what I give you a lot of credit on is, number one, you edited the book yourself before you send it to an editor. Sometimes people will write that last word, write that last period, and they say, whoosh, I'm done. And they want the editor to do all the work. And exactly. what they don't realize is that you're actually spending more money by doing that because Absolutely. many editors will charge you by the word or they'll charge you by the hour. And if it's difficult to edit your book, you're getting charged more money. That's exactly right. And I was like, Ew. and I had three sessions of editing mm. because when she edited it the first time, you know, she has some comments and things of that nature we discuss. And uh, some of them I accept, some I reject. And we went on to the second session, and it was like, you know, I would do this if I were you, and I would do that. And again, some I rejected, some I accept, because the way I put it in there, that was the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me, and I couldn't change it, because, you know, if I use the word ain't, it's not that I don't know that's not what you would normally put in a letter or in a book or something like that, but if that was the environment at that time, I had yes. to put that in there for the effect. Sometimes it's for emphasis. Exactly, and that's why I had to do it. And it was like, but, you know, you, you really shouldn't be doing that. You know, you're educated, you're this, you're that. But it had nothing to do with education because it was my trial, my tribulation, and that I had, that was my experience, and I had to put it in exactly the way it happened. Absolutely. You know, so she was like, uh, you might not want to do that. But once it was published, she was very proud that it was published, and <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, do you use my publisher? And they accepted it. I got no rejections, not the first rejection letter. Awesome. I I did not, and I was like blessed. And I said, Lord God, I know that this is a God thing because I mean, so, so many people were telling me, I don't know why you're writing this book because it's not going to get published. Wow. You know, and you know, you're always going to have some dream killers in your midst. And it's the way that you respond to those dream killers that's really going to measure your success. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So now, um, is this going to be your first time in New Orleans? It is not going to be my first time All in New right. Orleans because I have a friend there now. I will be looking, <clears throat> Dr. Lawson, I will be looking for her when I come to New Orleans. <laughs> I will be talking to her from time to time. Yes. No, ma'am, it will not. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> so what is your plan? I mean, have you ever done an event like this before? I have. I've done events like when I was in different uh, states, Ohio, Virginia, I mean, mm -hmm. I've participated in tons and tons and tons of expos, uh, literary expos. I've done workshops and things of that nature. So absolutely a lot of them. But here in the area that I'm in now, they don't do a whole lot of them. They usually have their regular annual luncheons, their parades and that type of thing. So mm -hmm. looks like I'm the one that's gonna have to bring some literary events here as an author. Okay, well, you, well, you have your friend in New Orleans who can help you with that. Absolutely. I will be calling on her, Dr. Lawson. <laughs> You're calling on. Well, we are really looking forward to having you here. Um, for those of you who are who may have just tuned in, you're wondering what we're talking about. Dr. Deloitte Jackson is going to be one of 10 featured authors at the Black History Month Literary Weekend here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we have four events we're going to visit. Um, St. Mary's Academy. We're going to talk to um, two sessions of students there. And then once we leave St. Mary's Academy, we're going over to the Algiers Regional Library, where we're going to do a free, yes, I did say free, a free writer's workshop, which will take place um, from 1030 to uh, 1230. And then um, after that, we're all, we're all free to do what we want to do. Before the writer's workshop, it's open to the public. All we ask is that you go to Eventbrite and reserve your seat. Because right now we have about 60 to 65 seats already taken for the, um, for the writer's workshop. So people are interested. We even have a group of students come from West Jefferson High School who are going to be in the audience. And they came last year, had a great time. So um, we invited them to come back. And so you're going to be able to talk to a lot of these students. So this isn't just a promotion thing. This is also an opportunity to impact a lot of our students. Awesome. I look forward to it. Oh, I look forward to having you here. <laughs> so 
So where can people find your book if they're un in case they're under a rock and they're not coming to the Black History Month Literary Weekend, but they're interested in your book? Where can they find your book? They can find a copy of my book on my website, tandyenterprises.org. That's T-A-N-D enterprises.org. They can find them on Amazon under uh, the Lois Jackson or Faith, My Walking Came to Glory. You can go into any of the bookstores, and if they're not there, you can order them. The only thing you would need is the title and my name. If you have the uh, ISBN number, number, they can also order it uh, via the ISBN number as well. Okay, and it's on Amazon, correct? Amazon, yes. Yes, you know, everybody likes to go to Amazon to get their books now, but I still like going to the local bookstore myself. Yeah. I've gone to the local bookstores and they weren't there, so what I did, I ordered them. That's the way you so do it. If they order, if you order one, they'll order two. And you have one in the store. So usually when I travel around the country, I would just stop in a bookstore just to see, and I know they're not there because they don't keep a lot of our books in the stores. So uh, I would order one and they would order two. You know a little something about marketing and um, book sales, I see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. that's what, you know, I've done that for, oh my God, I've done it several times and it works because if they don't know you and you, you know, you're an author, that's one of the things I found to be, you know, be helpful for me. I'm not really good on, let me back up. I am good. But <laughs> <as> for, <laughs> I love it. I am good. But one of the things that I need to do more work on is the marketing. Marketing, not my, just myself, but my book as well. Because although the publisher published the book, you still have to be the face to your book. Absolutely. So Absolutely. You have to get out there and you have to push it because they're just not going to do it. You're right, and that's, that's a big thing. People think that they can just sit back and chill because they have a traditional publisher and that the publisher's right. going to do all the work, and it doesn't always work that way. It does not. I'm here to tell you, you really have to get out there. They'll schedule a couple of book signings for you in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you have to get out there pretty, pretty much and do all the other work yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not easy. All right, well... Unfortunately, we have come to the end of the interview, <laughs> but I, I really want to thank you once again for not only joining us tonight, but joining us this weekend for the Black History Month Literary Weekend. We really look forward to having you here. Um, when do you get in, Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Awesome. Thursday. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, and we I look forward to you seeing you. I get there. I'm sorry? I can call you that evening when of I get course. there because it's not too late. No. And um, I didn't know if we were going to do anything Thursday evening or not. But, well, I have some plans. I'm gonna let I'm gonna email you guys about that this week. Awesome, awesome! I'm <laughs> so right. excited. I'm so excited to uh, be invited. I'm so excited about the Black History event because every day I deal with youth. I have a preschool, and uh, that's what I do for a living. But I also I'm a professor at a Bible college, so wow. I teach Bible college. President of the Bible college too. You would think once I retired from the government that I'd probably be resting and finishing up some of the other books that I started. No, not here yet. <laughs> so well, I'm also in the process of getting a private school off the ground. So right now I have inspections going on uh, so that I'll be bringing online a private school, kindergarten through 12th grade. Hopefully it'll be online when school starts back. Well, you, you are a busy woman. Congratulations on, on all you're doing. And uh, we look forward to seeing you this weekend. So you have a wonderful night. And um, have a safe trip here to New Orleans. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. All right, thank you. All right, so we are going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we are going to meet another author who's going to be a part of the weekend, Miss Diana W. But in the meantime, I want you to take a look at this Black History Month moment. Let me know if you know the answer. If you know the answer, comment it below the video. Um, the Everybody who answers the question correctly will receive um, a Literary Pride t-shirt. And then we're going to draw the winner, and the winner is going to receive a fabulous prize, and we're going to announce that prize at the Black History Month Literary Weekend Brunch. So here's the question, and we'll be right back. Stay right there. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night. 
with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl, Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blogtalkradio.com slash Real Talk with Mary J at 10 p.m. It's going to be a Merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. Well, what's up, everybody? This is boy, Coach Hurricane Hemp. You can follow me on Facebook at Henry Singleton or on Twitter at Henry Hayo U15. Listen, this is your boy, Fred. Listen, you can follow me on Facebook at Brandon Fred Jones, or you can follow me on Twitter at B Fred Jones. This is Jeremiah Gray, man, with G Sports. You can follow me on Facebook, Jeremiah Gray, a.k.a. G, and on Twitter, G underscore, paid in full, zero eight. Pay me the money! <laughs> <laughs> money, money, money! <laughs> New year, new show. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The year 2019 is going to be an exciting time in the city of New Orleans, and we want you to be a part of it. If you have a book, an event, or a business that you would like to promote right here on Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions, contact us at www.mtwimagesolutions.com or info at mtwimagesolutions.com. See you there. We just finished talking to author Dr. Deloitte Jackson, and now we have with us in the studio author Diana W. Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. How you, how you doing? Well, you got all kinds of stuff going on. This has been a busy year for you so it's, far. It's been a busy year. Yeah, it has been. <laughs> I was about to say it's been a busy two years. but Yeah, basically, what? how many books do you have out now? Four? Um, this is the fourth one. Yeah, so you have four, four books out. The latest one is Distorted Perception. Yes. Okay, and... You are a part of our weekend, the Black History Month Literary Weekend. Yes. And then you have your own event the following month. Yes, on March 30th, we yes, have Crew um, of Lit. Crew of Lit, yes. Goodness. <laughs> See, she she understands what it means to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I figure it out. I just get up and go. Well, how long have you been writing? Um, I've been writing for as long as I can remember. I used to write... Um, Poems from my mom and dad, and some of them she still has like in her bedroom, kind of like framed and stuff That's like nice. that. Um, but I only took it really serious. I think my grad, I was in grad school graduating, and for some reason I felt compelled to write a book. I don't know, like I wasn't busy enough at that time. Mm. But I wrote a book and just sat on it, and it was sitting there, and I didn't know what to do with it. And then 2017, I was like, you know what? Let me submit this and see what happens. 
and then boom, and now that was four books ago. That was four. So that, that means that ago. you've really been busy because a lot of people only write maybe one book a year. Mm -hmm. If you've written four books in two years <laughs> and you have a full-time job. <laughs> what a kid now, yeah. <laughs> Girl, I thought I was bad. I, look, I'm bothering out with you. <laughs> no, but the good thing about it was um, that book that I wrote, it was, I turned it into three stories. I broke that up, which was gave me the ability to write those three yes. books. So, and that was talking to a publisher at that time, a small publisher, but talking to her, she was like, you know what, these are, what, three different couples. Let's break it up and give it a different kind of feel to it. Okay. So we worked some things around. That's how I was able to write it kind of quicker than most gotcha, people. Gotcha, gotcha. So what, whatever interested you in writing? I love the fact that you say you've been writing for as long as you remember. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that is a big motivation behind the Black History Month Literary Weekend mm -hmm. because kids these days, they don't get that. Right. I mean, uh, many times, and it's no bash against the kids. It's just that we have so much technology now that nobody wants to sit down and just read a book anymore. Right. And so they don't, they don't have the same experience that we had when it came to reading. So um, what was it that interested you? What attracted you to reading? Uh, mine came in, in a funny way. I was I went I graduated from West Jeff, class of two thousand four. So I'll see y'all oh Friday. My goodness, you're so <laughs> but I had a teacher. I was in gifted and talented English, and I had okay. a teacher, and I wrote a paper, and it was about Lord of the Flies. I think everybody had to write a paper yes. about Lord of the Flies. She redlined the whole thing and was like, <laughs> this is not going to cut it in college. <laughs> and she wrote that on paper, this won't cut it in college. Mm. And I don't like when people challenge me because I'm like, oh, okay. So you got mad, but you did something <laughs> positive with that anger. Okay, I like Correct. it. Correct. So I went to college and I'm like, oh no, I'm giving I'm giving the A grade papers and I was like, let's push this past this. What else can mm. we do with this? And That's a big thing. I think I've actually got those challenges once I got to college. I remember one time I wrote a long paper. That paper was like 40 pages long. I was proud of that paper. Ooh, I told that lady, I said, how you going to give me a 40 on this paper? I said, that pa my paper was 40, pa 40 pages long. She said, yeah, it was long. <laughs> But it really helped me, though, because by the time I joined the military and became an Army journalist, I was always getting kudos on my writing. Mm -hmm. my, my writing improved because of teachers like her. Correct. Yeah, that's so correct. That's why I said that sometimes it's good to have that person that challenges you. I agree. I agree. I didn't like it at the time. No, nobody <laughs> likes it at the time. <laughs> especially when you're like a perfectionist. You're like, yes. Trying to tell me something I did. I and, did especially when you work so hard on it, stayed up all night oh, on it. <laughs> like, I don't have nothing else to do. Right, right. <laughs> but no, it turned out, you know, I like the result of what happened. Awesome. That's wonderful. And so, um, now what do you plan to do with writing? Do you continue to write fiction or where do you I think go? I think I live in fiction. I live in fiction. <laughs> right now it's African-American romance. Um, mm -hmm. Distorted perceptions moved over to romantic fiction, but it was suspense added on to this. Okay. Um, I think if I change anything, it'll probably be a little bit of, Fantasy. I have that, and then I have an action one kind of in the works. So that I was just it. going to ask you that. What is your dream genre to write in? I think fantasy. I think um, mm. there's so many, like, Lord of the Rings. Yes. There's, there's what well, we had Black Panther come out, and we realized, hey, black characters could be in these forefronts yes. and be these heroes that we can have posted on our wall. Absolutely. And I think that kind of motivated me to push forward with that story. That I'm Absolutely. Yeah. You've got to meet um, Alfred Tumblin. One of our authors, um, his book is actually, um, I'm going to say it's kind of it's kind of a fantasy book. Mm -hmm. um, it's some something totally unlike anything that I've read before. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this we really need you to be a part of this. Yes. People need to see that we can write in different genres. Yes. So I'm 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 interested. I'm, I can't wait to see all you writing. <laughs> I told you I was because you know we were getting a lot of people who were writing self help books and. Um, Basically, self help books, mm -hmm. and or or they were um, like um, spiritual books, right. and I wanted to make sure that we had something for everybody because mm -hmm. I love those books as well. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have some fiction, yeah. and so I was really excited when you came on board mm -hmm. because you're writing fiction books. You're writing books that you know just the average reader wants to read, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I mean, now what do you plan to do do with that? I know you said you want to go fantasy, mm -hmm. but, like, do you still want to stick with writing these relationship books as well? Yes. 
because our story is often not told. Absolutely. And I've heard from people in the actual, the big publishers. Mm -hmm. I've heard from literary agents in that world that two black leads, they're not sellable. Mm. And you know that makes you feel away. So yeah, of and, and lately, and there's nothing wrong with interracial. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. But I have two black parents. Yes. I was a product of that. I'm married to a black man. So yes. why is my story not more important than their story? Absolutely. So as long as there are people who have these love stories, then I'm going to continue to write it. And so will the people that I'm, um, a lot of authors that I'm associating with lately, tell beautiful black stories. Let's keep that going. There's nothing wrong with a good love story. No. And, but I like love stories with complex characters. You know, my main character doesn't always have to be perfect. <laughs> they don't always have to be the best looking person in the room. <laughs> yes, give right. me some complex characters. I remember one time reading a book. I hated everybody in that book. I was like, I don't like her. I don't like him. I don't like her daughter. I don't like her mama. <laughs> But I kept reading that. <laughs> well, I was told that distorted perception was very frustrating mm. because it's about a wife who catches her husband being unfaithful. And like most people, instead of processing it, you become reactive. Yes. And the first thing that comes along, the first person, somebody you probably shouldn't even be dealing with comes along, and then you, you move based on hurt. Mm. Instead of dealing with your husband, so I then like and then what happens in the story takes a turn because this person you moved on with isn't necessarily a nice person. Absolutely. So it's a lot of a little crazy wrapped up in there, but um, it's an interesting story because even through that they're resolving their issues through the madness of it all. That's that's amazing. I'm I'm looking forward to reading that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but now um, so let's move. Let's shift a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about career of lit. Okay. So um, we know this is coming up March 30th. Yes. And how many authors do you have? Um, I think we have about 18 now. Wow, 18 authors. And there are different genres. You have your children's authors. You have your nonfiction authors. Correct. You have your um, adult fiction authors. So um, talk to me about how you were able to pull this together. What, what was your goal for this? So I've been to a few events. Um, my last one was August last year in New York, and it was... Um, but it was independent authors. It just so happened to be, actually I had one guy there, but it's independent authors who normally don't get that marketing mm -hmm. out there, but they have a large audience and there's yes. no way to connect with them. So it was about bringing them all together for their fans mm -hmm. and new readers to connect with them, buy their books, get their signature, get pictures, you know, right. just have a good time. Everybody that's into reading books, get together. And it's almost like a literary party. Yes. And I was saying, it's crazy because down here we have so much talent and yet, there's nothing like this. Or if there is, I haven't heard about it. Right. And I said, you know what, why not? I talked to a few of the women that I know that host these events in different cities, and they just gave me some, you know, tips and things like that. And I was like, you know, let's see if this can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so me and my sister talked about it in another author, and we just started seeing if there was interest out there. And we had over 60 people put in, 60 and authors. That, that's the part I really wanted to get to, because you had 60 authors who were interested but you only have 18 authors who are a part of the event. Mm -hmm. So what was that process like? So I think sometimes people put in the event and not thinking that somebody might actually reach out to them. <laughs> <laughs> so then you respond, and then you have to go through the not getting a response back, yeah. and then you kind of go to the next person. But I also wanted to keep it just broad because it's not just fiction. I mean, there's people that write every single thing. I just wanted to have a good representation of yes. every single thing going on. So if somebody, this might not be your taste, at least there's somebody over here who you can fit into. And then getting into a panel, everybody's thought processes are different when they write. And as an upcoming author, maybe you want to hear on that panel discussion, you know, like, what, start, what motivated you? So mm -hmm. you want these people to, you know, it might be the little push you need to get your work started. Okay, so um, Crew of Lit will not just be a gigantic book signing then? No, it will not. All right, so what do you have planned? We want to have, it, I, I said, my vision was an experience. Mm -hmm. So you come in, you're meeting with these authors. We have raffles from um, different vendors, not just locally either. Just some people who donated into that who want to give away gifts. Um, and also we have a panel discussion. So it's questions that you want to ask authors. Maybe how did they get into it? How right. Did, you know, just anything you wanted to know, you can ask that. Right. And um, 
with music involved. So you you know, it's just the experience. You go in there, you're having fun. You yeah, might it's have a, a it's a party experience. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No. Well, I am totally looking forward to it. Good. And I'm also looking forward to being part of Black History Month. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I mean, mean, all of these events and being able to impact kids, um, you know, just reaching out and networking with other authors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be a beautiful experience. I think so, too. Yeah, so I'm really happy that you're going to be a part of it. All right, we have a couple minutes left. Can you tell people where they can find your book? Um, You can find my book. Um, They're on Amazon right now. I'm looking to get into a couple different areas, but for right now, they're on Amazon. Um, and you can go to my website if you want to find stuff out about Crew of Lit. It's dianawrites.com slash crew of lit. And I'm on Instagram, the same name, Diana W. Writes. Everywhere you can find me, you'll find me <laughs> under that title. Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. I'm under that title. So now, um, the last thing I want to ask you, we have about a minute left. Mm-hmm. Um, what is some advice that you would give? Because you're pretty new on the scene, having written your first or published your first book in 2017. Mm-hmm. But now you have four books. You're mm-hmm. um, you're actually sponsoring your own event now. You're mm-hmm. getting out there. You've built up a pretty decent following in um, social media. Mm-hmm. What is your advice to people who may be trying to get there? Um, start. There you go. Some. What's What's the reason you're not doing it? You know, we always find reasons not to do something. Um, I think I had an epiphany on my 30th birthday when I was like, why not? Why not? What's the harm? If you write this book, mm-hmm. what's the harm in doing it? So what if you send it out to 10 people and they might not respond back? So what? Well, the problem is, is that there could be so many different reasons why they didn't respond. Maybe they didn't see it. Maybe it went to their spam. Mm-hmm. Maybe they were busy and said, okay, I'm going to answer that later and then it got deleted. Right. And that happens to me a lot. <laughs> I, I'm sure I have to go through my email sometimes. Did I answer to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get busy and it happens. You know, so there's nothing wrong with following up. No, and there's there's an audience for everybody. Just like there's music for everybody, there's a reading audience for every single body, no matter what genre you want to get into. Somebody wants to read it, I promise. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, the other part is, you have a very supportive family. Your sister's I right do. in there with you. She is. Yes. And she always says that I'm not the author, but I but she reads. She used to be very heavy into Stephen King when we were teenagers. Just scared mm-hmm. the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephen King will do that to you. Right, but she used to be heavy in so she's into like the literary world. Even though she's not an author, she's a heavy reader. All my well, like both of my But it's are. always good to have a supportive family. I don't know what I'd do without my family when I'm putting these events on. If they weren't there to help me out. We have a momager. Yes. That's what we call them. She got there a little go. shirt now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for being a part of the show. Me. And um well, we, we're going to talk again, because I'm going to have some of your authors on the show in yes, March. Yes. So, yeah, we're going to eventually be talking again and um, just getting your authors some more exposure. So, I'm looking forward to that. Me, too. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. Um, did you guys get the answer to that question yet? Um, check out the Black History Month moment. Answer this question. Make sure you answer the question underneath the video or you can comment it. We will be posting it to the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook and Instagram pages a little bit later. Go ahead and comment your answers so you can get that T-shirt and have a chance to win an awesome prize. So we'll be right back. While we're gone, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. When we get back, we'll be talking with Copper Bamboo. Y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you.
Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, DJ Slick Daddy. This is DJ Slick 514. And, of course, I'm your girl, Black Coco. Tune into the Live Line, New Orleans Talk Network, every Tuesday, 7 to 8.30, with all the trending topics. And you can also check out my mix, DJ Slick Mix 1 and 2. And, of course, check out Coco's Sex Tips of the Week. And hashtag TTBF. That's that bullshit. It's the Live Line, New Orleans Talk Network, Tuesday, 7 to 8.30. We're always live. Let's go. Hmm. Purchased uh, Saturday actually, Black Man I Can. You I know? love it. Yes, yes. yes. I like black, black. I love that. You know, because he's he talked about being being a black man, but also how we're all we're all connected. We're all yes, kin. Yes. And I love his message. So yeah, unfortunately I couldn't wear it, but I'm wearing this one. This is a uh, Kitchen Ink Apparel. This is a this is a local brand here in New Orleans. Also, See, you know, shout out. This is one thing that I do love about New Orleans. We have a lot of different apparel designers, which is one of the reasons why I'm excited about doing the fashion show because we get to highlight everybody in the show is New Orleans. Yes. yes. And that's what makes it even better. Yes. And then all of the different outfits we have: the couture, mm -hmm. we have the urban wear, mm -hmm. we have the jewelry, mm -hmm. and then we have the sexy wear. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Yes. You know, first I'm really excited about Couture Detour with yes. Kimya Noreen. Oh, I can't wait to see those uh, t-shirts. Uh, oh yes. Uh, I'm so excited <laughs> about that. You know, that's how I got started. She, you know, she and I started working together. Okay. And, you know, I modeled with her before in a couple of her shows. So it was just perfect as Kiss Met. That that on that audition, I was having to wear a copper bamboo skirt. Okay. And you know, and the audition, I showed off the skirt, and everyone was like, "Where did you get that?" You you came to me like, "Where did yeah. you get that skirt from?" It's like copper bamboo. Yeah. And then now look, copper you bamboo came, was part of the show. You came through and walked, and the way you held that skirt out. And then you did that little thing with your hand. I was like, "See, I'm I'm so I'm so dramatic. I'm, she's very dramatic, very, but she's a great model. Very extra. Okay, and that's how I love the And just just in case you are wondering, I did see Copper Bamboo. No, this is not Sonny. Mm -mm. I am <laughs> Stacy. I'm Stacy, but with this wig on, I'm Jeannie. So. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I work with Sonny at Copper Bamboo. Yes. That's at 3351 Cable Drive, Suite D, on the West Bank, because the West Bank is the best bank, y'all. Oh, you better goodness. come with us to the West Bank, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Sonny Sankofa, she's the owner of Copper Bamboo. Yes. And she's lived in the city for about 11, 12 years, and she moved down from Detroit. Okay. And, and so... This, this, uh, I love, I love this. I love Copper Bamboo. I love everything. And this, this little fanny pack is from Copper Bamboo. Yeah. Hold it up these cute little it. earrings, these cute elephant earrings yeah. are Copper Bamboo. And they're red. That these means going to want those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, these, these glasses are Copper Bamboo. Um, what else is Copper Bamboo? The, um... Oh, this, this, this yes. little bendy is copper bamboo. Mm -hmm. So I accessorize with them often, mm -hmm. and they have skirts, they have tops, they have dresses. Yes. They have, they have um, jewelry. Yes. Head wraps. Head wraps. We do classes. We host classes if anyone wants to learn how to wrap their hair. I need to go yes. talk to them because I love my head wraps, but I can only do one. That's the one okay. with the... With the, with, bow, the, with the bow? Yeah. On the side? Yeah, well, yeah. not even the bow. It's just the big knot that I put right in the front. Or sometimes okay. I put it in the back. In the bag. But I love my head wraps, so yes. I need to go to one of these head wraps. Absolutely. Classes. So we have, like, the stiff head wraps and the soft cloth ones. Okay. So the stiff ones, if you want to be, like, real elaborate, and the fabric, it just holds. 
Mm. And you know, it, you, you look like an empress with it on. And I love the soft ones also because yes. they're more malleable and you can mm -hmm. do so much more with them. So we've got a lot of options. And you know, the environment is, is carefree, it's fun. And, and I love that Sani, uh, she transferred from African artwork and paintings to the clothing. Okay. And, you know, so she, she's very versatile. She has, she, you find everything that you need there. Yeah, it's a beautiful shop. Now, um, one of the things that I'm excited about is having someone in who knows African print and African wear. Because, unfortunately, um, I do background work every once in a while. And one time they wanted us all to wear African clothing so they can do this scene. And there were people showing up wearing Hawaiian shirts. They were thinking just because it was a colorful shirt that maybe it'll pass as an African print. Now that's just straight disrespectful. Exactly. It's very disrespectful. And then we and then the other part is if you really know African print, you know what the colors look like. You know, you know how vivid, from. yes, you know how vivid the colors should be or how muted it should be. Yes. And you're right, you also know what parts of Africa it comes Absolutely. from. And unfortunately, there's a lot of fake stuff out there that they call African print. Yeah. And when you look at it, you know it's not real. Right. And so that's why I was really excited to have um, Sonny as part of the show. Absolutely. Because I knew she knew her stuff. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, I'm just a representative of, of the store. Mm -hmm. However, you know, if you come out, when you come out yes, yes. to our events on February 23rd, 7 p.m., 800 North Cleborn Avenue, yes. shoot. You can talk to her. You can ask her any questions you want. You know, I'm just, I'm the model for tonight. Jeannie's here representing it. But you can ask any questions that you have. And we'll probably do an instructional, you know, have some have some head wraps there. Now, that would be awesome. Because like I said, head wraps are the thing yes, now. Yes. And But everybody doesn't know how to wear them. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But the thing is, I think it's just about your creativity. Yes, yes. Because it's just really a piece of cloth. And, you know, you only limit yourself based on how creative you are. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, once when I do it, you know, you just put it on, you can tie it up, turn it this side. You have fun. Right, you know, have right. fun. You know, you, you don't and have... she's having fun right now. <laughs> and I love it. fun. You see, <laughs> I am the party. <laughs> the party. <laughs> What else are you doing? I know you're doing the modeling, mm -hmm. and you're working over you work over at Cap Copper Bamboo. Yes, yes. So, but you're doing a lot, and then you yes. also have a journey that you were telling us about right before. Did you want to talk about that journey? Ah, <sighs> yes, yes. Okay, so I work um, another location. I work is uh, Carmel and Sons Botanica on 1532 Dumain Street. Okay, and it's a spiritual shop. That's near my old school. I went to Phyllis Wheatley. What? Yes. I know they get out of town. Hey. Yes. I'm real, I'm real New Orleans. Y'all think I'm playing. I know I may not sound like it all the time. <laughs> but you know, it got to come out, though. Exactly. So I've been here 13 years. And, okay. you know, so I'm, I like the fact that I still I still can speak professional when I need to. Right. However, if you need to get your mind right, that New Orleans will come out. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sons Botanica is a spiritual shop. Okay. And I, I love the fact that I can incorporate the fashion aspect and my spirituality. Because in order to, as you, as you, as you go on your journey and you climb that mountain, it's it's so easy to get lost. Yes. Oh, so get lost in the clouds up there. <laughs> but you need that spirituality to keep you grounded. Yes. To keep you rooted in, in who you are. Yes. Because it's so easy to get lost in an industry like this with so many different people competing. All this yes. competition, competition, competition. And I tell you, being a creative is very difficult, especially right. in New Orleans, because New Orleans has so yes. many creatives. Yes. Yes. And with so many creatives, you know, it's harder, it's harder to really stand out. Yes. So you have to find ways to do that. Right. And then part of it is just collaboration. Working together. Yes, yes. Working together. <laughs> look, yes. show me some pictures. Let's take a look at the okay. clothing line. So this is copper bamboo. Yes, yes. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Love fun. that dress. Oh, yes. And it's so much fun. Mm. So when you come in, a yes. lot of people are really intimidated by the clothes. One, because it's, the colors are so vibrant. Yes. And most people aren't used to wearing bright clothes bright colors. Yes. You know, I remember one customer came in and she picked out two dresses, two identical dresses, one in black and one in hot pink. And she and tried she, on she tried on the black one. She said, you know, I think I'm gonna go to black. 
And I asked her, I said, mm -hmm. do you wear a lot of black typically? She said, yes, yes, I do. I said, girl. Well, I had the green hair at this time. <laughs> so I said, girl, you better add some color to your life. Add some color. I said, add some vibrancy. Yes, yes. You know, I said, get out of your comfort zone. It's 2019. Why are you doing the same thing you were doing back then, man? Do something new. Right. I said, you know, I think you're right. And she, and she got the pink dress. Oh, she got the pink dress. She got the pink dress. I was so happy. I was so happy. I went around and gave her a hug. Good. Because, you know, it's, it's that first step. Yes. You know, just coming into the store and seeing the variety of clothing that we have, it can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. And I just say, just try something on. Right. You, and it may look this way on the hanger, but wait until you put it now, on. Another point I want to make about um, African clothing is that it's gone so much further than just the regular daishiki right. or the mumu dress. Right. There's so much more that we're doing with African wear, as you saw when we were looking at the um, at the designs a little earlier. Right, right. So you don't you can incorporate your African clothing with yes. professional wear. You can you can go to work with this. You can go to dinner. You can go to a ball. Yes, you can go to church. You could go. You can go grocery shopping. You can go to a picnic. You can go anywhere. Yes. Anywhere. Okay. Yes. It, it. You are your own limitation. You limit yourself. So think. Outside the box, you know? Outside the box. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's what the clothes, you know, the clothes, they speak to you. And that's one thing I love about fashion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I talk to Kimya about these things, it's like, it's like the clothes, they, it's the intention behind it. Yes. The, the creators, you know, they. You they, can they, tell they put so they much put, love into what they you know, do. Yes, yes. Yes. You know, I went to, um. Raiments of Power with uh yes. with yeah with Alfred, Alfred. Yes. yes and uh, Mama Besiji yes and they were they were constructing constructing the outfits that we were going to wear mm -hmm. and I'm I'm watching them in awe as they're creating these yes. beautiful pieces yes and it all just makes sense you know Mama Besiji like pricked her finger and I said you know. These artists have blood, sweat, and tears yes. in the creation. And, Ma and Mama Basiji, she actually puts all of these things together by hand. Yes, yes. It's beautiful yes. to watch. Yes, you know, yes. and Alfred and his, his and creation. You, did you see the clothing yesterday? I did. I tried them on. They're so wonderful. I can't wait to model them. I can't wait to model them. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you did in the bathroom, girl. Uh, uh, well, uh, peace, my love. Peace. Oh, I said, I'm your whole ring, y'all. I'm your whole ring, y'all, real quick, you know? Sent to myself real quick. <laughs> yes, oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, we, we only have a few minutes left in the show. So we're going to go ahead and do a little recap. Okay. Let people know what's going on. Yeah. So the Black History Month Literary Weekend, it starts February 22nd. Mm -hmm. At 8 o'clock, we will be at St. Mary's Academy. And no, everybody can't come to St. Mary's Academy. This is for the kids. These are for the students. So we're going to go there and talk to them for a couple hours. We're going to talk to them about writing, about pursuing their dreams, about mm -hmm. careers, and how writing, even if they don't plan to be an author, mm -hmm. how writing can help them in their professional careers. Absolutely. We'll be talking about that. Absolutely. Then we're going to move over to Algiers.
a part of that. Because um, one of the things I didn't tell you is we're going to be awarding our 8th and ninth grade essay contest winners. That's and awesome. And they're going to read their essays at the brunch. That's awesome. Yes. I'm, I'm so excited about that. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then the really cool thing, both of these kids go to public school. Beautiful. So, you know, you can say what you want about public schools. But I went, I'm a product of a public school myself. And now my name is Dr. Lawson. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. There no. you go. So I love the fact that our um, public school kids are getting out there and they're doing wonderful things. And we need to support them because if they were doing something bad, we'd be all out there saying how they um, they should be doing this and they should be doing that and those kids, this and that. But let's support our kids when they're doing something wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. (laughs) All right, now I'm going to go ahead and show you that Black History moment one more time. There it is. It is sponsored by Roots and Connection. Now... For Roots and Connection, we have a, they actually have a trip coming up. They are sponsoring a trip to Ghana in August. Oh, that's yes. amazing. And they're looking for people to take this trip. Roots and Reconnection is so awesome mm-hmm. because basically what it's all about is taking people who are of African descent, and they're taking them over to Cameroon, they're taking them to Ghana, and they're, getting, they're actually getting in touch with themselves. Can I be a part of that? Too? Yes. Oh, okay. Absolutely. That sounds great. I yes. love that. So that's what Roots and Reconnection is all about. They have a magazine. Um, they, um, as I said, they they take people over to Cameroon and they'll they'll give people a tour of Bimbia. Now, a lot of people don't know what Bimbia is, but Bimbia is actually one of the largest slave trade sites in the world, and it was just recently discovered a few years ago. Okay. Yeah. So they actually give tours of Bimbia now. Um, Lisa Aubrey, who's one of our guest speakers, is actually she actually wrote a book called In Search of Bimbia because she was one of the people who discovered it. Wow. Yes, wow. and so she's going to be at the brunch and she's going to be at the fashion show. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you. That's a wonderful opportunity. Yes, you yes, know, so, absolutely. Yeah, we can ask a lot of questions about yes. that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm I really excited about that workshop, about that writer's workshop. You should come out. So I have my degree in English okay. from Z- Xavier University of Louisiana, University. baby. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't go to Xavier, but I respect y'all. <laughs> right, you know, that's okay. Healthy, you know, it's so well, I I love I love the fact that this this writer's workshop, you know, I, I can I can work my way into this and and reconnect with, with my English roots, you know, and make maybe start my own book. You yeah. should. Absolutely. You can probably be a featured author, author next That's year. That's Come a great on. idea. Something to look forward to. Yes. Next year, 2020. 2020 vision. 2020 vision. 2020 vision. 2020. 2020 vision. Maybe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rhonda. All right, so that is actually all we have for tonight. This was okay. such a fun show. This was fun. Yeah, like you, you can come back to this show anytime you want. Thank Just show you. up and we'll put you on, girl. Thank you. I like this. <laughs> I like this very much. Thank you. All right, all right. (laughs) All right, so that is all we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to see you this weekend at the Black History Month Literary Weekend. We have free events. We have affordable events. We have a higher-end event. We have a lot going on, but it won't be the same unless you're there. Absolutely. Yeah, so... See you there. Yes, so thank you very much, (laughs) Stacey, for being a part of the show and representing Copper Bamboo. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you to Diana W. We cannot wait to see her books. She's going to have all of her books there. And thank you to Dr. Delois Jackson for um, talking about her book, Faith, My Walking Cane to Glory, which is absolutely beautiful. That is Cap- Copper Bamboo. That was Sonny. Mm-hmm. That was um, Sonny. Yeah, that yes. was Sonny. Those were earrings from fine, there. So. <laughs> Bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to see y'all this weekend. This weekend. And then we're going to see you again next week. All right, y'all have a wonderful night. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging.